Hello, everyone, and welcome to Channel 781 Headlines. This morning, the Traffic Commission met and discussed whether to continue car-free outdoor dining and pedestrian access to Moody Street this year, but didn't make a decision. Mayor McCarthy made a proposal to make the street a one-way for cars for a portion of the week, and during that time, people would still be able to park on the street. Councillor Paz presented an alternate plan which would close the street completely as in past years, but for a shorter four-month period. That plan would apply to the next three years and calls for the city to collect data to inform future changes. The commission decided to hold a public hearing before making a decision, so look out for yet another opportunity to give input on the future of Moody Street. We'll discuss that issue more on our debrief show and we'll have Saul Blumenthal from Critical Mass on. This week, a request for proposals for the former UMass Field Station was posted on the city website, and it was very different from the set of three RFPs approved by the city council. The posted RFP is seeking one five-year lessee for the property rather than dividing it into two parts and makes that lessee responsible for the remediation on the site. Waltham Fields Community Farms released a statement saying this change will make it more difficult for them to submit a proposal. The Boston Globe published an article about the farm this week and said Mayor McCarthy declined their request for comment. We'll also talk about that more in the debrief. You may remember that the Waltham Channel reported recently that Waltham School Superintendent Brian Reagan is a finalist for a job in another system. It turns out that's because he doesn't have a guaranteed job in Waltham next year. At last night's school committee meeting, teachers and school staff used the public comment period to advocate for Dr. Reagan, who has not yet reached an agreement with the school committee on a contract for next year. The teachers, who are represented by the Waltham Educators Association, also do not have a contract for next year yet, despite announcing back in November that they'd reached agreement with the school committee on the key points. There's an opening on one of Waltham's most powerful commissions, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Michael J. Cotton, who served on the board for many years, passed away in February. And this week, the city posted a job ad for a new member. we are talk about that on the debrief also. The city announced this week that it has purchased the property at Zero Prospect Hill Road. That's a vacant property that abuts Prospect Hill Park and is used by neighbors to access the park. But it was owned by the Antico family. In January of last year, it appeared they were planning to develop it, but a petition asking the city to preserve it as part of the park got over 1,100 signatures and appears that effort has been successful. It looks like the recreational plans for the Fernald site are moving forward. At a meeting on March 2nd, the Conservation Commission voted to approve the portion of the plan that's under their jurisdiction with some conditions. The city will need to complete the process of putting a conservation restriction on the land before beginning construction, and they'll need to send the commission a landscaping plan to approve. The approval came after the engineer who designed the plan made several changes the commission requested, including netting to prevent golf balls from ending up in the wetlands. At that meeting, the commission chair, Phil Mosier, also raised the issue of rodent poison, referencing the bald eagles and other birds who've died recently from eating poisoned rodents. At a recent meeting of the council's Community and Economic Development Committee, a city official said the city uses poison as well as other types of traps and the poison is more cost effective. Mosier suggested that the commission from now on ask property owners to commit not to use poison as a condition of all the projects it approves, and the recreation director agreed to that as a condition for the Fernald approval. Also, on March 8th, the Parks and Recreation Board voted for a second time to approve the overall recreational plans for about a third of the Fernald site. They had previously voted to approve it at a meeting in July of last year, but that meeting was not properly announced to the public. So someone brought this to their attention and at this meeting they voted to reaffirm their approval. For those who don't know, the Fernal School was a state institution for people with developmental disabilities that was in operation for about 120 years. During that time, many generations of people were involuntarily committed there for life and many died on the site. The recreational plan includes a memorial, but the details of that memorial so far have not been discussed in any of the meetings. The next thing we post will be our debrief, so stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching.